You're watching Good Morning Britain. Some extraordinary revelations from Alec Baldwin uh, in his first sit-down interview after, of course, that fatal on-set shooting of cinematographer uh, Helena Hutchins. Yeah, the Hollywood star broke down in tears multiple times during an 80-minute interview where he described the moments leading up to the tragedy. Here he is talking. Do you feel guilt? No, no. I feel that there is... I, I feel that... that, that uh, Someone is responsible for what happened, and I can't say who that is, but I know it's not me. I couldn't give a about my career anymore. Is it over? But why? Well, it could be. It could be. If I decide that I, I mean, could I work? I'm going to go make another movie in January. And I start to cock the gun. I'm not going to pull the trigger. I, I said, do you see that? She goes, well, just cheat it down and tilt it down a little bit like that. And I cock the gun. I go, can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? And she says, and then I let go of the hammer of the gun, and the gun goes off. Well, we're now joined by Steve Wolf, an expert on weapons safety for film, who says in no situation would he use live ammunition on set. And we're also joined by entertainment lawyer Rachel Fisay, who says breaking his silence on the shooting could give the actor legal problems further down the line. Let's talk to you first of all. Um, it, it's clear that he's devastated, Rachel, by what happened. No question of that when you look at this interview. Uh, I was struck, though, by how clearly he said, he, and quickly, he answered that he didn't feel guilt. And that sounded to me like he'd had some legal advice. I agree with you. He's clearly devastated. He's very sorry about this tragedy. And he feels like he has to, in some way, defend himself. Uh, and he was clearly coached by an attorney and it, where this would not be advisable in any event to really go on television and make public statements. But he was clear to say somebody's to blame and it's not me. So that admission in and of itself could be problematic given that he's a producer of the movie. However, he really did do a lot of deflection as to wrongdoing during this interview. I mean, the other thing is a criminal investigation going on as well. So there's questions about whether he should have been doing this interview in the first place, uh, Rachel. What do, what do you make of that? Was it a good idea? It's never a good idea during an active investigation to speak publicly. It is difficult for celebrities and people in the public eye who are used to dealing with the public directly not to speak directly to the public, even during a criminal investigation. But no, uh, you inadvertently make admissions during a public statement as particularly during an hour interview that could come back to haunt you later, regardless of what you meant by them at the time. So absolutely it's not, it, it's not a good idea. Steve, one of the things he said as well was that he definitively did not pull the trigger. He released the barrel. The hammer. Now, the hammer, the hammer, sorry. Yes, you're absolutely right. Sorry, Ben, he released the hammer. I don't really know anything about guns, but is that possible? And what does that mean that you... Re what's the difference between releasing the hammer that fired the bullet and pulling the trigger? Well, that, that's an excellent question. I'd be happy to show you. Um, this is a replica of the same gun that he used. Yeah. And to work this gun, you have to perform two deliberate acts. First, you have to pull the hammer back. It makes three distinct clicks while you do that. And then to get it to fire, you have to press the trigger. However, you don't necessarily have to do it in that order. On these guns from the 1800s, if you depress the trigger and then pull the hammer back and release it, you can still get the gun to fire. However, uh... in no circumstance, when you have the hammer cocked, will the gun fire without the trigger being depressed. So uh, there's definitely two deliberate acts that were required there. He had to cock the gun and he had to press the trigger. And he but maintains that he, he didn't pull the, the trigger out. out. If he had his finger on the trigger, if he had his finger on the trigger here and he's pressing it, yeah. he may not be aware that he's pressed the trigger. Then he pulls the hammer back. Right. And then he releases it and then the gun fires. Okay. So, so that's a the horrible, horrible series of fine details that may or may not happen, which I guess is one of the things that the investigation will look into. Um, and on top of that, 
There was no reason, he said, and no reason why a live bullet, a yeah. piece of live ammunition, should ever have been on set. And that still definitely not cleared up. Well, it's, there's, there's a lot of chatter to indicate that people were firing these guns out behind the set buildings. Uh, Alec himself said that he received an hour and a half of firearms training uh, from Miss Reed. So to do that training or to go recreationally plinking during the downtime, they would have had to have live ammo on the set. And everyone would have known that because you can't get far enough from the set to not hear a 45 long cold going off. Steve, so I, they, can, they knew there was that, sorry, there ask, was that it was there. Can I ask a question about they, that? Because that seems, I mean, obviously we have a very different gun culture over here than you have in the States, and this was a film set. But it seems extraordinary to me that on a film set, a working film set, where there's a huge amount of crew and lots and lots of people, that they would have had live ammunition that some of the crew could go and fire the guns in downtime. Is that normal? It, it's unusual, but then again, it is a Western and everyone on the set is carrying guns, and it would be to the benefit of the set's safety for everyone to have had some firearms training, right. uh, especially if they're gonna be using the guns on set. It would be helpful that they know how to use them properly. So if I were working on this set, I would have taken all of the principal actors who were handling firearms, and we would have gone to a safe location, and we would have practiced uh, you know, some, some gun training yeah. with live ammunition so that they understand what it looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like, so that they could recreate that when they're using the same guns with blanks. And when they're being filmed, yeah, of course. Rachel, he, he says he doesn't care about his career, um, uh, was asked whether he'd work again, and he said he didn't know. But he is booked to start filming on a new film quite soon. Um, what do you make of whether he can work again in this situation, or whether he should work again, or how that leaves him? I think part of the interview is again trying to control the narrative as it relates both to his public image and the potential prosecution that he may face and the civil lawsuits. So I think part of controlling the narrative does take his career into play. I think that he will work again. Um, and it sounds like he intends to work again in January. A lot of this interview, he was very sympathetic and I think people will feel sympathy for him. I, I, I don't think this is a career ender necessarily at, as to uh, this kind of image that he's putting forth. So I, I think that these are the reasons he's staying in the public eye, even it, it, when it's possibly not to his best interest as it relates to the legal issues. Yeah, I think, I think you made the point as well, Rachel, and this is what he said. There's lots of people throwing in comments which aren't helping. And as somebody in the, in the public sphere that is used to talking to his, to his public and talking to people, he will have wanted to try and you know, respond to some of those comments. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there, but it is fascinating to get your thoughts, Rachel and Steve. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Well, still to come, our correspondent, Pip Thompson, is live for us at a secret location. It's for a very special Million Minutes moment, and we're going to reveal all. You're going to love this um, in a bit. Can you give us any clues? No, Kate, I can't. <laughs>